Hello, my friends. Uh, welcome back uh, for another video on um, RF and microwave device and circuits design and 3D model. Very soon, I'm going to start something other than 3D model, which is we're going to shift into some more active and uh, uh, circuit designs using um, Momentum, ADS, and RF Pro. But for right now, uh, in this series that I've started uh, with two videos already on radial power combiners and splitters, uh, we're going to finish up with uh, HFSS. Uh, again, my uh, name is Dr. Mohamed Nizami. Uh, I'm an, uh, an RF microwave circuit and system design consultant independent. Uh, if you have any opportunities for consulting, please reach out to me with this number on these using these apps or uh, with my email. Last time, my friends, we covered uh, two videos on the, uh, the RF and microwave uh, radial power, power, com power combiners and splitters, and as you are aware, we covered uh, the um, surface integrated waveguide or substrate integrated waveguide um, radial combiner. We've also covered um, the waveguide based um, waveguide coaxial type uh, radial combiner last time. Please refer back to my videos to watch them uh, so that you can go ahead and watch this one uh, more appropriately because some of the material that I'm going to talk about was already covered in these two previous videos. Today, I'm going to talk about a, um, <clears throat> a uh, coaxial, uh, an interesting design of a, of a, of a radial combiner or splitter that is based on a cavity that is fit in the center with a coaxial line or coaxial connector, SMA or NTI. And then, and, and, and then the uh, output is basically uh, eight uh, suspended line probes that, that pick up the signal, if in the case, if you're designing a um, uh, splitter, that will pick up the signal from the inside the cavity, uh, or they, in the case of combining, they would actually bring in the signal in the uh, suspended line to the cavity and then radiate out, and then the signal will propagate up to the ceiling of the uh, of the uh, cavity and on to through the uh, end type or coaxial uh, line. Before that, I uh, just have a little announcement. Any of the videos I've covered, you can you can obtain a copy of any of uh, my uh, uh, current designs. Um, uh, you can obtain the uh, the HFSS source code um, for the price that is posted on the uh, uh, on on here. So you can email me, and then I'll show you how to do uh, send in the. Uh, electronic payments and obtain a copy of the design in addition to a uh, <clears throat> few hours of support on uh, getting up started uh, with that design. If you want to reverse design it for something else or if you want to take it and just figure out how it's done. Uh, meanwhile, all of these videos are basically um, covered in my training course, okay? Uh, which I hold every other month, okay? And you can register for that course and the information is right here. Uh, so the next session is February 15th, 18th, 2023 in the new year. Happy new year, by the way, coming new year. Uh, and it's going to be held at the Olive Branch Hotel, which has a website, this one here. And that's in uh, Jarash, Jordan. The the price, the cost is $1,000 per person. Uh, that includes the hotel room, 
meals and few uh, trips uh, around the city as well. So you can, uh, again, you can see the videos covered in this, in my channel that is pointed out here. And you can contact me to obtain the registration. Um, also, it's coming up, not just this training, but there's also two more trainings. Uh, one of them is ANSYS, uh, sort of like mix between signal integrity and out of uh, um, planar circuit designs that talks about how you take a VC board and then import it that is done in Altium or or, Caden or Cadence Allegro and how you would import that into HFSS uh, and RF Pro and uh, do post layout analysis and verification. And that's very important for companies. I've spent many years doing that because that, to, uh, that can avoid uh, having to do a lot of uh, board spin outs where, due to issues with uh, impedances not being correct, um, not enough isolation, issues with the stack layer uh, design, um, and so forth. Okay, so please register for that. That's held in Jordan here uh, in Jarash City. And I believe for anybody that comes from Europe and North America, uh, there is no visa. So you just book your ticket and fly over and I get you to stay at this uh, hotel here. Um, yeah, it's a pretty nice uh, hotel in a rural area. And uh, you get to enjoy that near the uh, one of the Decapolis cities, Roman Decapolis cities. So you can v visit that as well and visit other parts of the country. So you can make it as a vacation and as a uh, um, an educational and uh, training, uh, especially for those people, uh, uh, so for people from UAE and Saudi and uh, other Gulf countries, um, they're also, uh, this is very attractive. So uh, a lot of these uh, trainings, they're usually held in, in the United States and um, uh, it costs you a lot of money to go over there uh, and, and difficulties in travel. This is right next door to you. Uh, you can come in and some of you can drive to the training. So give me a call or um, reach out to me with this email if you'd like to register for that course. Okay, so last time we've covered, uh, well, last two times, we've covered, this is a series on radial power combiners. Um, so we've covered, we started looking at the um, in-way combiners and splitters that are done in one step, meaning they're done using a, ca a cavity, unlike the planar or the uh, classical combiners based on Wilkerson or uh, other form of um, like hybrid 90 degree or whatever, uh, those other splitter combiners that have some kind of face associated with them on the outer boards. So, and we said that there are three types. There's uh, there, some of these combiners are based on a cavity combiner, some of them based on non-cavity combiner, or some of them are spatial combiners. And we covered these videos. Um, so, I apologize. This, this we covered these already today. Uh, we are really covering. Uh, no, we're still covering resin cavity. So today and last time, both of them are resin cavity. Uh, the next video will be on conical transmission line cavities. And, and these are oversized coaxial uh, air-filled uh, coaxial cavities that are used uh, in power amplifiers, um, radially uh, structured power amplifiers, like those um, offered by what used to be CAP uh, Wireless in California, which got purchased by analog devices, and, and now they call that product line Spatium. So just as a reminder, um, now, unlike when you have a power amplifier that is made of a parallel uh, combination of several devices to build up to the power level that you want, 
especially with GANs. Um, usually we split in that case with Wackersons or uh, 90 degree hybrids or uh, 180 degree hybrid or rat race cut hybrids. And then we uh, pick up and do the opposite mirror to that and we combine out. Radar combiners really don't do it that way. They just do it in one shot. So you can imagine as if your uh, devices are all connected in air to an antenna that picks the signal from a source and then optically, uh, coherently combines it at, at a certain focal point, for instance. In fact, that's why a lot of people sometimes call, the, call this not only spatial combining, but uh, quasi-optical uh, combiners. And, and you'll see that uh, in the literature as well. So the difference is huge because in here you have accumulation of losses. Uh, it's usually spread out in the X, Y directions. It's not radially stacked up like it is in this case. Uh, so in this case, you end up with a geometry that is rectangular for the power amplifier. In this case, you end up with a geometry that is cylindrical. And that's, in a lot of cases, that's very attractive for um, platforms that have a cylindrical shape to it, like drones, uh, satcom terminals and transponders, uh, rockets and airplanes and so forth and other airspace. Uh, just as an example on this stuff, uh, you can see this is a, um, right now, a Spatium <coughs> products offered from uh, Corvo. Oh, I forgot. I apologize. Actually, it's not analog devices that bought them. Corvo bought them. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> So this is a, a typical product, and the, the, this is done. There is here's a splitter, here's a radial radial power splitter, and here's a radial power combiner. Okay, and the amplifiers are all lined up 360 degrees around with cards. Okay, that are sliced into the cylinder in here, and uh, you can see the 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 good thing about this is they're huge broad bandwidth. And that's why a lot of these, they utilize them for electronic warfare systems where they're trying to jam a very wide band um, um, uh, to deny communication system to the enemy. Um, so this is one of the, the this type of uh, cylindrical, uh, the radar cavity we'll cover next session, okay? And these are um, widely known, but not widely covered and not widely really uh, utilized, I would say. Okay, so another details on this, basically here is what it is. Okay, you start out with an N-type connector, N-type for the fact that it's high power, so you use N-type and, and it's larger, so you can get bigger cross section. And we start gradually, what we do in there is we, we, we this is the splitter in here, and this is the combine, as I did to it here. This is a splitter, and this is a combiner, and in the middle is the, the uh, PA devices that you're trying to cover, basically these devices, okay? So the way this is done is that we built a, a coaxial line. Up to this point, it's based on using Teflon as an insulator, but beyond that, we use air gap we use the medium is air uh, for minimal loss. And we build this, we exaggerate the size of the inner, the outer, so that we can actually insert in here these devices that pick up the signal, okay, spatially and combine them again, like it is here. So whatever you do on this side, you do the opposite on this side. And so again, so uh, spatial power combiners with, Closed waveguide structures are desired because of their high combining efficiency because, you know, they're utilizing air for transmission. So you can't get better than that as a medium of insulation between the inner and outer uh, connectors. And it's compact structure, meaning it's really radial. Uh, I mean, if you were to spread out these amplifiers, they would take out uh, X, Y direction and they become large, okay? 
and high power handling, of course, because we don't have any printed technology that do the splitting and combining. It's all really done spatially. Okay, so this is a cavity in here. We consider this as a cavity, and this is a cavity. This is a combiner, and this is a combiner. This class of radial combiners are called the coaxial, um, oversized coaxial wave guide, uh, wave, wave cavity, or, or cavity uh, resonator. Today, we're going to cover um, an interesting uh, uh, cylindrical cavity uh, combiner and splitter. And I, I showed it, I show it in here. And basically what it is, and let's go to HFSS, maybe we can have more control on showing. Uh, so this is what we're going to do today. This is a design that uses a, a, ca a cylindrical cavity in here. Okay, and then there is a board inserted into it in this fashion, a board with, with slots. These are little slots on the side of the cavity that extend out and become another guide or enclosure for a suspended line because this is suspended line because it doesn't have any ground on the bottom. It's suspended in air and in dielectric, okay? And the I use the Roger uh, 4003 for this design, okay? So, uh, and then the uh, we feed the signal through this coaxial connector in here. This coaxial connector is basically made of the Teflon, as you can see in here. This is the Teflon in here, and this is the inner connector, and that's the outer shield, okay? So the way we uh, excite the signals in here, first of all, this is simple to design. It's not difficult. So all it is, first of all, is, is you start out with, you have a cavity in here, okay? This cavity you design based on formulas uh, that are based on Bessel equation, and I will show them in a minute, okay? The cavity, of course, has a lid. In this case, I separated the lid. It's lid in this case, as you can see. And then the transmission line is this guy here. This is this one, we know the dimensions of the transmission line, the coaxial line. Okay, so we have an inner connector that extends, let me show it sideways, that the coaxial line comes into here, and then we have a little opening for the insulator, Teflon insulator, to come in, and this would be an opening after which the center connector is, is becoming a probe to excite this, uh, the, the cavity. And then after that, we have we have a um, uh, the uh, substrate itself, okay? And that, is, that substrate, the board can be built this way, okay? For eight of them. Now, this is, even though I showed it for eight, but you can make it for four, you can make it eight, 16, and so forth. And all you have to do is extend the width uh, the radius or the diameter of the cavity. But of course now you can do that up to a certain extent where the cavity would start exciting more modes and you can't get, control that. So you, you need to make sure that, the, as I was showing the equations, coming up equations and the equations that you might have seen in your electromagnetic classes, that um, you need to make sure that you pick a, a diameter so that only the dominant for your frequency of operation so that the next nearest uh, dominant uh, mode doesn't get excited and you end up with a lot of losses and dispersion, okay? So, and then what I did is, is I'll show you in a minute how you systematically design this, but uh, uh, initially what I did just to verify, I, I ran, I designed the, the suspended line separately. Okay, and the design of suspended uh, uh, strip lines are basically covered. I have them covered in my uh, video in here. There's a video that I have, which was the design KA band waveguide to suspended uh, strip line um, transition. You can refer to that, okay, a video. But um, this here, uh, Let's just see, let's just show how the signal propagates, okay? 
this is basically it has a an opening in here. You want to make sure that the opening, the A and B, because this is like a waveguide, you want to make sure that this doesn't um, uh, become a waveguide where the signal will leave out the conductor and start propagating through the air in there, okay? So basically, if you look at this line, the key to it is that the signal is mainly in the air gap. It doesn't propagate a lot, a very tiny portion of it propagates in the uh, substrate, okay? Um, as you can see here. And that's the key why uh, these lines have um, very low loss, okay? So basically around this on the frequency uh, for that length, it's only, uh, you know, 17th, 10th of a dB. Air loss is assured beyond 20 dB, uh, minus 20 dB. So after the... Okay, welcome back. Brief uh, disruption. So uh, we were talking about the um, this particular uh, radial splitter and combiner in here. It's made of, I would say, we can split it into the following parts. The first part is the feeding mechanism to the cavity. This is the cavity. That's a cylindrical cavity. Uh, the first part is the central central um, feeding uh, coaxial connector that is connected to the outside world. And then the cavity itself, which is cylindrical, okay? And then the board that contains, in this case, eight suspended line probes that extend from the outside inward toward the center, all symmetrically placed around the uh, the, the the circumference of the uh, of the cylinder okay which are, these are the basically what we call the peripheral output ports or input ports in case of if it's combining if it's combining these are the inputs and that's the output if it is splitting this is the input and these are the peripheral outputs and then there is the little piece uh, so this board is placed somewhere in the uh, cylindrical cavity in such way that uh, the, 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 uh, the, the back end acts as a quarter wave uh, short, meaning we want from the center of this probe, the impedance looking down this way, it's looking downward, it's, it sees a quarter wave length of a distance now the wavelength of the inside the uh, waveguide cavity, not the wavelength of the um, inside the substrate or the board. So that, as you know, if you have a quarter wavelength short, that means it's actually an open and, and we want to see it open, okay? So let's uh, look at the uh, this in the... Uh... So basically what we have, again, like I said, we have the the um, the coaxial line comes in in here. It's a 50 ohm and feeds right at this point. Okay, inside the cavity, and there is a probe. The probe length initially we set it to a quarter wave of the wave guide uh, length. Okay, and then we have these probes that comes in in a housing like this, and then they stick out also a quarter of a wavelength from the edge of the uh, cylindrical cavity. Now the quarter wavelength in here, though, it's not the same as a quarter wavelength in here, and it's not the same as a quarter wavelength in here, because that one, a quarter wavelength inside this medium, which is the, uh, the, um, the substrate. By the way, this design, uh, probably I will follow with another um, video, where it's done using microstrip. And the only difference is that the width of the line will be different. And then the bottom will all be ground, except of course the, 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 the uh, place where the, the, uh, where the uh, 
the the signal goes through the uh, the 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 cylinder. So in that case, we would have grounds in every bottom of these ones. But this one, of course, has to stay clear for that the wave propagates this way and sees a quarter wavelength extension from the bottom of the board to the edge. Okay. So as you can see, the uh, the um, the way that we designed this is very straightforward. Uh, we start out with the uh, this one. The dimensions of the coaxial connector are all given, okay, from the manufacturer because we use either N-type or SMA, okay. And then we built a cylindrical cavity, and we have the formulas for cylindrical cavity using the Bessel equation, so we know that. The resonance is a function of the diameter and the uh, length of the cavity, and we end up with a with a formula where, uh, depending on what, which mode you want to operate the, the cavity in, um, whether it's TM01 or TE01, and then you end up with uh, an equation that is a function of the, the the radius and or the diameter. In that case, we might say and then the length of the cavity, okay? And then some coefficients from the Bessel function, okay? Which we have them in tabulated forms. And you can refer back to any, the Mathy book or any of the electromagnetic uh, or microwave bo uh, design books on cavities, microwave cavity, and you can see the equations. So we start out with that. And then the length of this probe, the center probe, the center probe that excites the signal in or picks up a signal out, this one is a quarter wavelength, so that's easy. We start out with quarter wavelength, but then we run the optimizer, the EM 3D modeling, and then we, we optimize that length. And then the distance from the center of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, from the uh, center of the substrate to the bottom, that's also a quarter wavelength. And that is in, in conjunction with the theory of uh, waveguide to micro to strip line uh, transitions. It's really a transition, and I have my, my I was two videos based on that uh, design mythology for strip line and for suspended line. Okay, so uh, once you have all these dimensions, you draw this into the EM model and you run it, and of course you won't get the perfect response because of the uh, assumption, all these assumptions of quarter wavelength are based on the fact that it's theoretical. So you're gonna end up with having to optimize this length, the length of the probes, okay? And that's about it. And then the length of the cavity, which is this distance from here to here, and this distance from here to here, this is quarter wavelength. So this one in here, naturally, it would have to be at a certain length that somehow makes the overall cavity as a half wavelength cavity. So obviously you can't make this suction in here a quarter of a wavelength because then you don't have, you. Uh, this is a quarter wavelength, this is a quarter wavelength, they would touch. So you need to extend further a few sections of quarter wavelengths to get to that. Okay, uh, excuse me. So now let's uh, let's go back to the lecture, okay? And then cover, give a little background, which we gave last time on, on the uh, design. So basically the design starts out like this, okay? We have a cavity, the cavity is cylindrical in the cylindrical coordinate, x, z, and phi. Uh, it has a, a, a radius, which is a, or a diameter, which is sometimes they call it a, subtext. And then we have the, the d is the length of the cavity. And we have two formulas that we can excite this, operate this in a TE mode or TM mode. And, and both of these equations are exactly the same, except the p and m and p and m, one is prime, one is unprime, these are correspond to these Bessel function coefficients, okay, that are used to derive the 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 um, the resonance frequency for that cavity, for the TE uh, mode or the TM mode, and the NML 
corresponds for uh, basically um, the three uh, dimensions that this cavity is in, which is corresponds to the D direction. And then the MN is the for the uh, modes, the electromagnetic modes. So for instance, we can come in here, the prime ones are for the TE mode. So if, it, if you, and the, the unprimed the unprime ones for the TM mode. So if, if I'm operating this in TM01, that would be N is zero. And we need to jump over here. One is this one here. So we use that number in here, okay? And then of course for two, we use this number in, uh, in here, okay? To meaning uh, these two. So usually cylindrical uh, cavity like this, the, the lowest order mode is TM01, okay? And then the right next to it is TM02. So when you're designing this, depending on where your frequency is, you design it as such that the dimension of this has to be a dimension which not long to allow this to propagate, but allow this to propagate, meaning the cutoff frequency for this waveguide, you want to make sure that this mode doesn't propagate. So the, the, the length of this, of course, it's multiples of L, uh, to, uh, as you can see it here, the electrical length. is multi L is, is this length, so you end up the first one, which is when you have one in here, this comes out, D is equal uh, pi over two or halfway length, okay? So theoretically, last time we covered this in the case for the uh, uh, waveguide radial combiner that was connected via, via coaxial um, connectors on all these sides. Uh, you can utilize the circuit equivalency where you can see that the cavity itself is represented with this. And the R in here is to represent the uh, Q that is a Q of the cavity. And so and then the input, this is the transition, uh, the coaxial two waveguide transition. And in our case would be the coaxial two cylindrical cavity uh, transition or cylindrical uh, or circular waveguide. Okay, and in this case, it's all the peripherals that are attached to the sides. These are the oops, we're scrolling too fast on this. Okay. So, okay, so we know that the impedance on, of the peripheral uh, outputs, it has to be at least multiple times of the, uh, of the input impedance, okay? So in this case, it would have to be 400 ohms instead of 50 ohms because you've got eight of them in parallel. So to get to 50 ohm, you need to have that much. Uh, so here is, bear with me, let me get to that one. This thing is so slow. So uh, considering this, so now we have this, uh, like I said before, we have a cylindrical uh, a coaxial to cylindrical cavity transition, which is here. And then we have the uh, cylindrical cavity itself, which is this. You might consider just the cavity, just this from here to here. And this is a quarter wave length extension of the cavity, or you might consider the whole thing as being cavity. And then we have in strip line to circular waveguide transitions. And that's these peripheral outputs or inputs in the case of combiner. So the waveguide mode is TM01 because it's circular. And the coefficients for the, uh, the Bessel function coefficients for those two modes are 2.405 and 5.520. Okay, that's comma in the European style of numbers, but this is two point. Okay, so 
So in that case, the cutoff frequency for the TE and TM modes is given by this, and, and you can refer to that. So that's for the, um, if the M is zero. If the M is zero in this, uh, in this equation here, Okay, if you put M, if the M is zero in that equation, in the cutoff frequency equation, we end up with, uh, okay, that's good. So page down works. We, you end up with this function here, which they are a function of only the dimension A, which is the um, radius in this case. Now, since this is symmetrical around the axis, the, the Z axis, now, one way to reduce the computational loading on this, to reduce the, the, the modeling time computation, if you need to, in this case, it's really not that uh, of a complex circuit, but you can utilize the, um, what we call utilizing the uh, perfect magnetic uh, conductor and perfect electrical conductor uh, properties, the electromagnetic and electrical properties on the structure and dissect this structure so that you can have only one eighth of the whole structure simulated in HFSS. In CTS, you can do the same as well. They have that tool. So you can do that if you like, or you can just run it all and just live with uh, the, this is here is not a, a huge complicated uh, system. So it can run pretty fast. While you're doing that, you need to also make sure that uh, you, you're really tracking the, um, the electromagnetic wave modes so that you don't excite any higher order modes, both in the coaxial line and in the circular waveguide, which is a cavity. So what you're really wanting is that you wanna run TM01 in this case, because the E-field, as you can see here, when you radially place probes, you can pick up the signal equ equally anywhere 360 degrees around the cavity. And the cavity, along the, along the cavity, you can see that you want to have the cavity so that it's, uh, it's uh, the, uh, the E-field distribution in the cavity, it's a, it's a half wavelength, meaning it's only one of these. So you stop, physically you want the, the <clears throat> the bottom of the cavity to be right at this line here, or multiples of that, but you you don't want it anywhere in between. You really want to have it right here, okay? So if you look at the pattern of our TM01, TM02, TM11, TE01, TE11, and the TEM uh, mode and T11 mode for the coaxial line, you can make sure that you view the uh, E field distribution on the simulator, make sure that um, you don't have any dispersion due to um, higher order modes propagating. So again, the design of this, um, and by the way, this structure is reported in the literature. There are several people that have built these and designed them. I, I took this uh, based on one of those and modified it so that it can actually be easier to build and, and, and simpler. Uh, although the, the matching in here is not the greatest. I, I, uh, the, this really has to be matched better. And we'll, I will talk to, to, about that in a minute because uh, I did not optimize it, but this will be in my training. I can do, I will definitely go through that, but you need to optimize the return loss at this uh, of these peripheral ports a little bit better. Okay, the, uh, the the inner feed is easier to optimize because all you're doing is you're extending the, you're, you're playing, you're tuning the length of the, uh, of the center conductor probe that comes in. So you just chop, uh, well, in this case, you would sweep it. You sweep the response with that parameter of the, this one here, with this center probe length. You just basically uh, make sure that you, you can optimize the return loss in this case based on this. With these ones in here, um, the, the width of the uh, suspended line, I went through that in the videos and, and there are some papers that shows you and some equations that shows you how to design that because that's, that is, that is uh, um, based on the height and the width of the um, enclosure. It's not just the substrate height. In fact, the substrate height 
plays a little tiny role in that, into that. So you can refer to that. You can also use in ADS the uh, TX line designer. You can go in and design a suspended line and come up with the um, the width and lengths as well there. So we have one parameter, which is the length of the uh, this one guy here, the, the central probe feed. Another parameter, the length of the uh, peripheral probe, okay? Another one is the diameter of the cavity itself and the length of the cavity, and then the distance from the probe, the peripheral probes to the back short. So, and, and, and the easiest way to do this is we assume that, let's start out, this is a quarter wavelength, this is a quarter wavelength, this is a quarter wavelength. And of course, the height of the cavity is this quarter wavelength plus this distance in here, in which you can start out saying, let's add a um, little bit so that you're just about a few, a few tens of a percent over the uh, half wavelength, okay? Or multiples that uh, accommodate physically this length in here. Okay. Uh, so let's go to the cavity in uh, in the uh, HFSS and just see the frequency response. Let's see the magnetic field distribution first. And this guy, oops, this is the the. Uh, okay, so you can see that here is the um, electromagnetic wave propagating through the um, through this and let's animate and show for both combiner and spur. Okay, so here we go. This is right now it's set for being a splitter, okay? So basically, uh, we have the signal coming into the probe, to, uh, to the center probe via the coaxial line. As you can see, the coaxial line, I extended it too much just to, so you can see that they, you can see more than a half wavelength, just physically, but in real life, it's just a tiny little bit because it's just a connector. In this case, I gave it almost the length of the cavity, which phys in physical life, in real life, this won't be the case. But anyway, so this goes in radiates out in the cavity, and then all these probes act as antennas almost to pick up the signal in which, and then they would convert it from um, TM mode into the circular uh, waveguide onto a TEM, quasi-TEM TEM, uh, mode that propagates through this here, the suspended line. So let's look at it from the top. You can see how nicely that is, okay? So you can see the signal going down and fanning out to the, symmetrically, of course. And that's the beauty of this um, radial combiner or splitter is that because of the symmetry along the Z axis and X and Y axis, you, you won't get any, theoretically, you won't get any um, phase mismatches or the, even due to temperature, there are no temperature, dependency of causing uh, face and amplitude mismatches in here. The only thing that could cause that is if you have manufacturing uh, tolerances. That's basically when you fabricate and assemble uh, these. If you make it one board, some people make this as a separate probes. Each one of these probes is a separate module and then they insert it into the cylinder car. But if you make it one board complete, that actually alleviates the, um, the the mechanical tolerances where between offsets between the uh, the placement offsets between all these probes. Okay, so that's one way to do this. Okay, so let's modify this so that we can uh, make it now uh, as a uh, combiner. Okay, so let's do that. So what I'm going to do, so put, I'm going to zero this one, and then we're going to make all of the other ones 
ones. Let's just double make sure that is correct. Okay, so we're gonna apply that. Okay, it's done, let's take a look. So now we have the other way. We have, let's show this from the top. So we have the signals coming in from all these probes, okay? And then going inward and, and being radiating and then coherently summing up at this point and then getting uh, picked up by the, uh, by the central probe, okay? And therefore this is a spatial combiner. This is a spatial combiner using cylindrical cavity and suspended um, line probes. Now, so uh, where would you, uh, now how do, how do you utilize this? Of course, basically, um, you know, um, where would you use it? Uh, I mean, obviously we know that it's used in power amplifiers and in uh, face array uh, planar antennas. Uh, so basically, uh, one thing you can do is is, uh, is you could, for instance, take uh, take this. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, you could, uh, for instance, take one of these devices, okay, and then uh, you can basically take one this way, which is. Uh, uh, something and then you can uh, let's say take this the other way around uh, and then uh, and then uh, build a power amplifier for instance you can go in and uh, 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 you can come in here and then uh, do your uh, power amplifiers in this case uh, here okay and then connect to uh, uh, the this one here okay and then you do that for eight of them and that way you can construct a power up okay and, and this would be a cylinder it would be and one, one attractive uh, mode of this is that when you do it in a cylinder with this metal in here that's good for heat sinking as well so you got naturally uh, a way and that's for good for uh, space probes and space um, uh, SATCOM uh, probes. So uh, let's look at the uh, frequency response. This is the, uh, this particular design, it's between 12 and 14 gigahertz, okay? And that's basically the band for KU band SATCOM, um, either a downlink on a SATCOM transponder or, um, no, the, I'm sorry, this is the uh, uplink on a ground station, okay? All right, in the case where you would use it in a SATCOM transport for KU band, it's the other way around for the, from 10 gigahertz to around 13 gigahertz or so, uh, it would be built for that, okay? Now, like I said, mentioned at the beginning, uh, this is the input return loss, and this is the output return loss for all these combined ports. And as, as you can see right now, this is not fully um, uh, optimized. It needs a little work. And that is because if you look at the, uh, at the system in here, this is a, a 50 ohm line all the way in from here to here. And that, that is not the case because looking in, into here, really um, you have a different impedance. So you, this probe needs to be uh, modified a bit. Okay, and I will do that in some videos coming up someday. Uh, uh, let's see what else. Um, so that's basically this. We did cover the uh, suspended line and so and that's where we are, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so um, I welcome you to make any comments or send in any questions.
uh, again, I'm just going to flash this by you. This is my coming up um, three-day training, hands-on. Every every trainee would get uh, would come in uh, and have an evaluation copy of HFSS on on him or her. They would sit um, in the hotel room and uh, in the uh, meeting room, and we will have. Uh, uh, small number, not a large number, so we can go around and all work in a team. And uh, we will design all of these devices in my videos. We will design them from scratch. You'll get a copy of every design. You can go in and see how this was done, how you build that. But we'll, we'll go in hands-on training on how you build all of these, plus covering some practical aspects of how do we fabricate all these? How do we do these? Well, uh, in the case of whether it's all solid model uh, from aluminum and copper and silver plated copper, or uh, if you have a board in this case, like in this case, how you get the Gerber files, how you go about sending them out and get them back and all that. So I welcome you to give me an email if you wanna to come to me, come to this training. Like again, like I said, for the Middle Eastern areas, Turkey, you know, uh, United Arab Emirates, Saudi, Oman, Kuwait, um, the cost of this is very justifiable because uh, for similar training like this in the United States, you would need several thousand dollars of uh, fee for the class and you would need several thousand dollars to get over there from this region. Um, this is right next door. You can come in and uh, enjoy yourself in a nice area and learn as well. Okay. Well, until next video. Next video, we'll cover the uh, oversized coaxial radar combiners. Okay. Until then, see you. Thank you.